So this morning, as per my usual routine, I'm having my first cup of coffee, and I tune into my buddy Steve Mignanti's Junkyard Crawl. So Steve posts a new video every morning, and if you're not familiar with him, the man is a walking, talking encyclopedia of the most obscure and arcane automotive knowledge there is. And the guy can make the trunk latch from a 53 Studebaker interesting. If you're not familiar, go over there, check him out, subscribe, tell him Tony sent you. Good stuff. But in the meantime, this morning, he's doing his usual thing, and he's got a 1957 Chevy four-door hardtop. And at the beginning of the video, he starts explaining the difference between the hardtop and the sedan. And I was like, okay, this is a good video. This is important stuff because nobody ever covers this. This needs to be expanded on because a lot of the terms and the definitions that we use to describe different types of cars, different body styles, and the subtle differences between them, kind of obscure. Now, a lot of it is very archaic. Like these terms go back to, they go back a hundred years. And a lot of those same terms are still in use in today's cars. But just focusing on like the classic era cars that we usually deal with on this channel, I want to go over some of these terms and some of these definitions and try to create a glossary for you guys who are trying to pick up on this stuff, try to create a glossary of generalized terms. Now, I say generalized terms because when you look over the landscape of all of the different manufacturers and all of the different styling eras and all of the variations between them, a lot of these definitions kind of like they, they crossbreed with each other and, and like some of them it's clear as mud what these cars actually are. But there are general terms that are fairly universal and describe the differences in the cars. So let's start with the most obvious misunderstood thing and that's the difference between a coupe and a sedan. Because most people, when you say sedan, people right away they think four-door. And that's not the case at all. Two-door and four-door are their own separate classifications. But the difference between a sedan and a coupe is that a sedan gives equal amenities or tries to give equal amenities to all passengers in the car. So in other words, the backseat passengers have adequate headroom. They have adequate legroom. The seat isn't cramped or anything like that. They have windows that roll down. So a sedan gives more interior space than a coupe and more accommodation to the backseat passengers. In fact, the definition, the actual definition between a coupe and a sedan of the same body style is the cubic feet of interior space. And a lot of times, that difference in cubic feet is taken up in the roof. So the sedan will have a taller roof. Now, Let's get into the roofs because roofs are very important. When you're talking about a specific family of cars, generally speaking, the roof is going to make the biggest difference. So you've got a specific family of car. And regardless of the configuration, the front end sheet metal is going to be the same, the grill is going to be the same, the hood is going to be the same, the quarter panel stampings are going to be the same, the door stampings are going to be the same, like the lines are going to be the same, the trunk lid, the tail lights, they're all going to be the same. But the differences are going to be found mostly in the roof. So here are your different types of roofs. You've got the sedan roof, which is generally taller, the tallest roof of them all, and generally supported in the center by a B pillar. And we're going to get into pillars in a minute because pillars are very important and also very misunderstood. Then you've got the hard top, and the hard top is generally a lower roof line without a visible B pillar. And you've got the, con the convertible, Right, which is a retractable roof. And the difference between a convertible and a roadster is that a convertible has a permanently attached top or roof. Whether it folds back, retracts, whatever it does, that's a convertible. And a roadster has either completely removable top or no top at all. Now I wanna talk about sports cars in a minute when we talk about pillars. I'm getting ahead of myself. Then you got the station wagon, which is self-explanatory. You've got fastback, you've got notchback. So, okay, so fastback. So fastback generally has a C pillar, and we're going, to, we're going to talk about pillars in a minute, that sweeps back and meets the back of the car. Now all of the manufacturers used 
some variation of a fastback body style during that period of time, but Ford really took the ball and ran with it, and they call their version of it the sport roof. And it's just, just a classic, beautiful, sweeping design. The opposite of a fastback is a notchback. So a notchback has an abbreviated C-pillar. The, the C-pillar is generally just a little bit thicker than the A-pillar. I have to talk about pillars. This is important. But that's the difference between a fastback and a notchback. Barracudas, second generation barracudas, the delineation between them, you get fastback cudas and your notchback cudas. Talk about first generation barracudas, is it a notchback or is it a fastback? Because it has, it has a notch sort of C pillar, but it's the glass itself forms a fastback part. What is it? I don't know. Okay, pillars, this is really important. So the roof structure is generally defined by the pillars. A pillar, B pillar, C pillar, and on a station wagon, D pillar. They're always in alphabetical order front to back on the car. What's misunderstood about them, a couple of things actually, is that the A pillar isn't just a visible part that you see that the windshield fits to. The A pillar is also extended down to the frame. So pillars can be defined as any structure of the car that comes up from the frame. So this is also known as the hinge pillar. The hinge pillar is part of the A pillar assembly and the cowl. And this is universal, really. That's the A pillar. Every one of these cars has an A pillar. A sedan roof will generally have a two inch or so taller A pillar than a hardtop roof. B pillar. Now, the difference between a hardtop and a sedan generally is noted by the visible B pillar. A sedan has a visible B pillar and a hardtop doesn't. A hardtop, the, the thing with a hardtop is you've got an unobstructed view through the greenhouse. So when you roll down all of the windows, there's nothing from the front windshield to the back window, just an open space. That's what a hardtop is. Now, when you have a four-door hardtop, it's not that they deleted the B-pillar. The B-pillar is still there, but the B-pillar is abbreviated. So the B-pillar comes up from the bottom of the car and it stops at the top of the doors. And this is where the door latches, the front door latches and the back door hinges. So regardless of whether or not you can see a B-pillar, the car still has a B-pillar. The C-pillar is typically defined as the back of the roof. It's also usually the broadest section of the back of the roof. But as we talked about, the difference between the fastback and a notchback, they come in all different shapes and styles. But typically, this, unless it's a station wagon, the C-pillar delineates the back of the roof. Was that clear? Oh, one other thing. When you've got a situation where there's more than one B-pillar, where there's more than one pillar between the A and the C, they're numbered B1, B2, not A, B, C, D. Okay, so that's the standard lettering system to delineate each section of the roof of a passenger car, typical passenger car. Now, there is an exception to this lettering system, that's sports cars, two-seater cars. that never had any provision for a B-pillar. So in that case, like a Corvette, for example, so in that case, the windshield post is the A pillar, and it will be the C pillar, the back of the window or the back of the roof, that becomes the B pillar on those cars. But that only applies to sports cars, to two seaters. All right, now let's look at the differences between a sedan and a hardtop on the same body style. So we use these two cars. Now they look radically different, obviously. This one is built out as a gasser, and this one here is just a regular stock car. That one is a 1967 Valiant, and this one is a 1972 Dodge Dart. But they originally started out on the same platform. The unibody structures are the same. The main difference being two inch shorter wheelbase on the Valiant, and that section is right here. So the backseat passengers have less foot room than they do on the Dart. But that's all besides the point. The main difference is here is that the Valiants were all built on this sedan or with this sedan roof. 
the sedan roof is two inches taller than the hardtop roof. Now right here you can see the difference. This is a piece of trim from a hardtop car. And you can see it doesn't quite make it to the top. I'm looking for the right piece of trim for this. I just stuck this in for the time being. But here's the difference in roof height between the sedan and the hardtop. Now also important here is that the door frames, well, let me show you real quick. This car was originally a four door. So the B pillar was originally mounted here. When we converted it to a two door, we just moved the B pillar from this position to this position. Filled in the back window and added the door frame around the glass. Now, the, the door skins on these cars are exactly the same. They're completely interchangeable. In other words, all of the lines, all of the dimensions, the lines, everything, the skins are the same. But you see, because this one is a hard top, no frame around the glass. And again, in the tradition of a hard top, when the back windows are rolled down, you have an unobstructed view through the greenhouse. That's the essential differences between the sedan and the hard top on the same car. Okay, now there are other variations on this also. And that's the difference between the hard top and the coupe on the same basic structure, the same basic body. So the Plymouth Valiant bodied cars, the Valiant, the Dodge Demon, and the Dart Sport were all built on the Valiant platform. So it has a shorter wheelbase than the Dart. But that has nothing to do with their designation as being coupes instead of being hard tops. They use the same roof height as the hard top, but they're coupes. What's the difference between the coupe and the hard top? The back windows. On the hard top, the back windows roll down. On the coupe, they flip out. All of those duster, demon bodied cars have pop out rear windows. And that is the only difference in that body style between the hard top and the coupe. Plymouth satellites, uh, Dodge Chargers, like B bodies, B body Mopars from like 71 up. The only difference between the coupe and the hard top had to do with whether or not the back windows rolled down. I know subtle differences that like, you know, you can get lost on this. It's like minutia, but it counts. There's one other body style I got to talk about, and that's like my personal favorite. It's the one to me that screams American muscle car, and that's the pillared coupe. The pillared coupe is the hardtop version of a body, two-door hardtop version of a body, but it has a B pillar here and flip out rear windows. And this was a very popular body style for like the most hardcore muscle cars of the day. The hard tops were more beautiful, obviously, you know, the, the lines are clean, but the pillared coupe was, had two benefits. The first is that it's lighter in the fact that the back windows don't roll down, so you don't have all of the mechanisms and supports for the back windows in there. And they're stronger because that additional B pillar stiffens the unibody. You could run those cars really without frame connectors because the roof is that much more supported. They don't want to twist. Whereas a hard top is almost like a convertible in that case, and it just wants to move around and whatnot. So that's a pillared coupe. All of the manufacturers had muscle car versions of pillared coupe cars. And like I said, that's my personal favorite. Yeah, I know. A lot of this is a little muddy and it kind of overlaps and, and it doesn't fit across the board. So, you know, because variations in generations of body style and the designer's interpretation of what these different terms and these different concepts mean. But generally speaking, that's a fairly comprehensive glossary of the common terms that apply to the common cars that we deal with. I hope you got something out of that. In the meantime, go over there, go check out Steve's channel, like, subscribe, share all of that stuff, and tell him Tony sent you, and I will see you tomorrow.